This paint right here is going to change your miniature hobby forever. This is Golden. It is a line of painter's brand paint. It's acrylics. I went with fluid acrylics. So what makes these amazing? Well, in order to understand what makes these amazing, we're gonna need to talk technical. So on every tube of Golden, right, you're going to have uh, this, a, a line of paint. And you might be wondering, what's the point of that? Well, the pod is the exact color shown visually. This tells you exactly what you're getting in the bottle right there. It's gonna help you understand the opacity of a paint or the opaqueness of it. And then beneath that, you're going to get so much information, you're going to be just ecstatic if you're someone who loves spreadsheets. So these paints all have technical names, which means they are cross compatible with other brands of paint, usually speaking, right? It should be a burnt sienna match, right? Liquitex has a burnt sienna, Golden has a burnt sienna. They should be the same. If you need to understand what exactly is this thing, well, it is a single pigment most of the time, especially for these fluid ones, right? But you can check the color code down there. It's PBR7, which stands for Pigment Brown 7, which sounds like, you know, nothing, the artificial flavor on the side of your gummy bears, but it's actually natural iron oxide. If you, if you need more, you can see the full Queen's English on the back of the bottle, right? You're also gonna notice a little square down there, this semi uh, cut off square for this burnt sienna, for example. This means that it's semi-transparent. The square is going to tell you how opaque or transparent something is. Carbon black, for example, is full on opaque, right? It has a blacked out square. And then some of these are gonna have something like a semi blacked out or fully whited out square, right? Which tells you that it's very, very transparent. You're also gonna have something called light fastness rating, which for the most of the time with these miniatures isn't gonna really be bothered. But if you go and do display painting or anything like that, well, your thing might fade over time, right? I've seen miniatures in my store that have been sitting in a display case forever and they're starting to get a little, little crusty with age. Well. That's light fastness. Now, all of these liquid uh, fluids, right, acrylics that I have here are all light fastness one, but the higher a light fastness number you have, the more likely it is that it's going to fade with time. Of course, years are gonna make a difference regardless, right? But if you want your stuff to look good, you, you should be, you know, keeping an eye on, on these kind of things. Another thing I like is actually getting to see what kind of chemicals are in these things. Uh, you, you don't really think about it, especially as a chronic brush liquor myself. Um, I don't wanna die, so. None of these are toxic though, but uh, there, there is like one or two from various different lines of golden. The, the yellow, um, it has a cancer causing chemical. So just don't lick these, by the way. So what makes these fluid, right? So Golden has a bunch of different paints. Uh, some of them are heavy body, so there's more like peanut butter out of the bottle, right? Fluids are more like heavy cream out of the bottle, right? I mean, this heavy cream thing probably doesn't mean anything to you unless you actually try out one of these paints, right? But if I had to describe it in like hobby paint terms, if you've ever used Vallejo, uh, one part Vallejo glaze medium to two parts Vallejo paint. That's about the consistency that you get out of the fluid acrylics most of the time. It's thicker than a speed paint or contrast paint, but much like those paints, you're not gonna be able to use it on a wet palette. The paints will break down, they'll suck in the moisture, they will turn into a watery, goopy mess and ruin the sponge underneath. So I have to use it on these dinky, glossy Citadel papers. I hate it, right? And as a result, they have like a medium length drying time. I, I've tested it out to see how long the drying time is, but I do highly recommend picking up a paint retarder to help combat this and you'll have a much longer working time with your paints. So the length of working time that you can get with these golden fluids, and I, I do live in a pretty humid area, right? I, I get about an hour to an hour and a half working time with these on a piece of paper with a dry palette, right? Um, without retarder, right? So they last about an hour. They can last anywhere from two to three hours. Basically I can get through a painting session by putting in a drop of retarder with them. And so they're, they're great. I, I really do enjoy these and super recommend them. But why would I use these over hobby paints? Well, knowing these technical names makes it very easy to make mixes and come up with all these different colors on my own. And I can come up with a lot of colors from this set that I have here. I don't even need all of these, but I wanted all of these and it was came in a set. Now, why would I wanna mix colors? I have all these pre-made colors from all these hobby companies. Well, what can seem like a negative is in a way, a positive. 
When you understand exactly what is going into each of the color mixtures, well, you can make whatever color you want. You can get a Caucasian skin tone, the subsurface scattering on a Caucasian skin tone, or perhaps a darker, more African skin tone, and you can be very precise and specific. And because these have technical names, I can write these down and just repeat it later. I don't need to worry about always having enough flesh tone from Citadel because I use it all the time on my pinup models, right? And then the part of this is that these paints haven't changed in years. These painters brand paints have been around for a long time. You don't need to worry about picking up a yellow and then a new version two of the yellow coming out like six months after. I've actually had that happen with some of the Citadel paints I picked up because then they'll reevaluate the line or redo the mixtures and then all of a sudden I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm missing out because I don't have the newest paint from them. Now, is it more work to do this? Yes, it is absolutely more work, but you know, <laughs> I did spend a lot on these, right? <laughs> but there is a certain kind of zen-like joy to mixing and coming up with formulas for different paints. Now, I I'm not going to paint my entire orc army in all these colors. It would be hell because I'd have to constantly keep mixing stuff, right? This is more for my display painting and stuff like that, stuff that I take time to be very precise with. And plus, it's a little glossy, so I'm trying to always get matte finishes on my tabletop miniatures because I just think it makes them better to hold. But on stuff that I put on display, I'm not so worried about that. Or maybe that's the look I'm going for. Now, a definite negative for these is that my workflow does involve licking my brush. I know I seem like a brush licker, right? That also goes for an airbrush. Um, one, wear a mask, duh. Uh, but then also uh, do yourself a favor and check the chemical makeup before you put this through an airbrush, right? You don't wanna give yourself or someone you love brain damage or anything, right? That seems like a reasonable thing to do for someone, right? Before I explain the workflow of these paints, make sure to like and subscribe, but also um, tell me if there's a paint line that I should try next. I'm not the best painter. I only started this year, but I have fallen in love with the paint and I enjoy the workflow with these specifically. So what else is out there? Please tell me, maybe I'm missing out. Now, this miniature you've seen before, uh, she was featured in the pinup video, the first video here, but she was uh, painted entirely with this set you see right here. Uh, most of the colors weren't used here, but I wanted to get a good variety. Magenta is an absolute must have in this set. There's uh, different kinds of magentas, but uh, it, it's the one I can't pronounce magenta, you will see it close up in the B-roll, but yeah, that is one of the featured colors on here, and it helps to make uh, tons of different colors on her. It definitely helps with her skin, and it might not seem like it does, but it does, right? Now, trying to figure out the skin came from mixing reds with whites and getting a more peachy color, and really kind of working that up to different colors of Caucasian skin tones. I was trying to copy the render artwork that was provided by Ronin Arts Workshop, the 3D print maker of this uh, miniature. Because some of these paints do end up coming onto the brush transparent, I, I had to go over quite a bit with these. And you can actually see the shine on some of her pieces of her body. Now, I don't mind. I kind of look at her and I go, oh, she's standing in the rain and wearing something totally inappropriate. So that is why I'm totally cool with her glossy figure in certain angles of light. The more specifics of golden paints can be found online, by the way. There's a whole technical data sheet that I'll leave down below for you, for you to check out. But, um, you know, I didn't use a couple of colors just because I didn't like the way they looked. I did use the blue, but the, the blue is, is weird with this, and so is the green. I'm gonna show you a miniature now that uh, really confused me, because I had never seen something like this before. Now, um, I was painting a Blood Bowl team, and um, they kind of have like this McDonald's look to them, and that wasn't intentional, right? I had painted this one specifically to show off what happens when you paint with nothing but uh, golden acrylics, right? So I, I did that and I tried to paint the ground green, you know, like a, like a field. And um, I, got, I got mint flavored, mint flavored floor. I'm probably gonna go over that because it looks terrible. And, and that's kind of the problem with buying like a little starter set like this is that you don't get all of the features of like a regular sized bottle. 
Uh, it definitely made it more difficult for these paints, right? And I, again, some of these are expensive, so maybe get the paints you need, not a bunch of them. It would probably be better. I'll leave a link to like the minimum you would need. Uh, also, Marco Frisoni, uh, not just Mecca, you know, uh, Italian guy. Um, <laughs> why did I specify that? <laughs> Marco, I'm sorry if you're not Italian, please don't sue me. I'm a dumb American. No, 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 I think I'm right on that. I think I'm right on that because I live in New York and I know a thing or two about American Italians, so. <laughs> now, they say the paint retarder doesn't extend the paint. It doesn't make more paint from than what is there, but I have to disagree with that. I do think that this paint uh, definitely becomes more paint when you add some paint retarder to it. So I'm, I'm going to do that. And I do highly recommend the paint retarder, right? So if you just pick up the, the Roy G. Bibb, right? And uh, black, maybe. Um, I do recommend picking up the retarder. You just put a little drop in there and it kind of is like, um, feels like moisturizer, like a very loose moisturizer in your hands. Uh, it, it, it is, why do, why do I want to eat everything? What's wrong with me? I haven't eaten that much today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you can see on here how it's a, still just plenty loose, right? Or how buttery it is. I mean, this is a pretty loose paint, you know? So this'll go just about as long as your hobby paints, but you are going to see a lot of different properties, right? I, I, generally speaking, I do feel like hobby paints are more opaque rather than not, with some exceptions like yellow, right? That are notorious for how not opaque they are, but there's some uh, occasional whites from different brands that don't travel as far or as well or as opaque as certain ones, right? So expect to do more than just two thin coats with this. You're probably gonna do more like three or four. I, I, I do think that this requires a bit more of a zen approach to hobby miniature painting. I, I don't think this is a way to do it for everyone. So I don't know if this comes through with the burnt sienna, right? Mainly because it gets caught in the gloss, but these things are really, really vibrant. I mean, when you get a single pigment mixture, they're going to be super vibrant, right? And again, I, I don't know if the feel of these paints really comes through, but they're very, very wet. They're very, very flowy, right? Which is good. And I think if you put it through an airbrush, it would be a good time. Uh, not straight, you're definitely gonna need to thin it down a little bit, but they do have a line that doesn't require that. Now, I'm not an expert at paints. I'm no Vince, I'm no Marco, right? But as someone who's experimenting and trying to get better, I do think these were an awesome step for me to understand how colors work. If you don't take anything away from this video, take some time to learn how to mix your own colors because it does make a huge difference, um, especially someone like me who uh, made the vow to himself that in the next decade, he will have a golden demon. So. You know, I better get at that. Anyway, in the meantime, make sure to like and subscribe and continue watching Mana Potion Tabletop. Watch my brother's video on making a candy miniature. It's pretty bussin'.